Foi Pronto, cara. Jesus Christ. I don't know! Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Reaching Out to the Unfamous. I am Kevin Lascon Anderson. You are my loyal subscribers. I believe there are 312 of you out there that have subscribed to my channel. That number is destined to change from time to time, but I know. Anyway, let's reach out to some artists, huh? Yeah! Alright. We have some deviant artist named Oliver, usernamed MewyB. That's Mew, the letter I E, has two letters, obviously, and the word B, right? Okay. I critiqued one of his deviations this past Christmas, a couple of months back. So I decided, since I was in such a secret Santa mood, that Christmas season in 2018, I would critique five deviations, one of which I've decided to cover here. So I'm going to read this to you very, very verbatim-wise, okay? So, in terms of originality, an ineffable aura surrounding the context of this drawing is genuinely intriguing and sets a very interesting tone. I give that portion of the review four stars. The per perspective is concerned, the perspective of which I see from his composition, and the way that he drew this, really stands out in one of the best ways imaginable. There are not only a surprising number of metaphors and analogies in this, but there seems for the most part to be something quite captivating in it that garters a sense of professionalism, so I give that portion five stars. As far as impact is concerned, though the drawing itself doesn't necessarily have the best impression, I could see Mui B honestly having done the best that he could with it, which heightens the impact of it in ways most unexpected, so for that I gave it four stars. Also, I have a runny nose. As far as technique is concerned, the style that he used, which from my perspective could have either been third or second person point of view from sheer happenstance, is remarkable in its own special way with both many benefits and perhaps several caveats, which I believe the both of us knew and know now what they are. So in this scenario, however, the benefits prevail quite astonishingly here. So I gave that four stars. So, I can envision Mui Beat's art style having progressed quite a lot over the time in which he became a deviant artist. And of course, he gave me his blessing to feature him on this episode of Reaching Out to the Unfamous. I will of course credit him in the description if I haven't yet in this particular picture that you see here, this particular shot, this screenshot, right? As you know, he has a YouTube channel. He doesn't have many subscribers, so I encourage you guys, if you've seen his work on DeviantArt and you know what he's capable of, please do not hesitate to look at his YouTube channel. And check that out whenever you can. By the way, that picture is really, really good. Mui B also has a Tumblr. So keep that in mind. Yeah. That feels good, man. Alright. On to our next artist in discussion. And this is concerning the former Rob Dyke who recently changed his name to Rob Gaffigan. Or Gavigan, I should say. Gavigan. Why did I put the F in his name instead of a V? So his new name is Rob Gavigan, from his previous name, Rob Dyke. 
Apparently, he changed his name a couple of months ago because, quite frankly, it's something that he had been wanting to do for years. And people have allegedly been offended by his name because, for whatever reason, his last name, Dyke, describes a lesbian. Not that anyone has anything wrong with it, but there are too many salty fucks out there that just don't put logic first. If there were people out there, you know, this world is so offended by everything that I could, I could say the word snatch in a sentence. And it obviously would refer to female genitalia, but you already know that. You, Many of you people, if not all of you, are old enough to know that. If you're not, you will be. But the point is, Rob Dyke changed his last name to Gavigan. So he went to the court to change his last name, and that's what he did. Meanwhile, he has really, really interesting stuff on his YouTube page, including... A Patreon, which you can donate to if you want. It only costs as little as a dollar a month, or about $12 a year. Right? You can donate to his Patreon. And he has all these YouTube series, like Into the Dark, Seriously Stranged. Did I, did I put a D next to the end of Strange? I meant to exclude that. So, Seriously Strange... Twisted Tens, Into the Dark, and why would you put that on the internet? Those four series that make up his YouTube channel are without a doubt very, very, very intriguing and provide some utmost interesting insight into things which I believe are very critical to understand and see for exactly what they are and not what we think them out to be. So if you can, please, 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 for the love of God, check out this guy's YouTube channel. And maybe even subscribe to it if you have to. Because honestly, Rob Gavigan is the shit, man. He is legit. He is legit in what he does. And it also makes perfect sense, too. And since I have a running nose, just a second. Get used to that, because some days I have a runny nose, and I just can't stop my nose from running, so I have to sniff every now and then. Anyway. Oh, by the way, I'm not sick. Just a runny nose, that's all, because, you know, I eat. It's what I do. All right. Onward now to our next recipient and artist who I know deserves to have some much needed attention. And I am talking about K. Kaiser. A man who has been on DeviantArt for the best half of nine years, a little over eight. 2,262 deviations to his credit, but only 21,000 page views. He has got a lot of stuff. A great ton of stuff. This, this guy, what he does, traditionally this guy is an art genius. This guy is legit in terms of traditional art. Now, I've got to say, I've got to tell you now, there was this one deviation of his, which I found really, really interesting, and it consists predominantly of his envisioning of a Loud House alternate universe featuring Lincoln and his 11 sisters. Where's it 10? I forget. But I found it so interesting I especially, you know, you know, Luna Loud, right? The rock star. He envisioned her as not being able to read music 
but being able to write it so well to where she is actually a conductor or director of music. So I decided to give my own take on it. Of course, I will link you to that in the description. All I've got to do is just is just give the link, you know. And the deviation in question that I'm linking you to that I re that I reimagined in K Kaiser's style is of course Luna now reinterpreted in the style of K Kaiser, obviously. And it's basically a digital art version of the traditional art piece that he made as part of this deviation that I had just mentioned of his reimagining of the Loud House family and its alternate universe. But you people already know that, now don't you? Oh, by the way, he does some really interesting Phineas and Ferb artwork as well. His artwork does not include solely the Loud House. It includes quite a few other franchises from The Legend of Zelda, I would say, to certain characters from DuckTales, I think it's Donald Duck or Disney or what. And he also does artwork of Phineas and Ferb, which I mentioned earlier. He does work of Harvest Moon, of Nicktoons. He does photo edits, or photo manipulations as they are most namely called. He does artworks of Powerpuff Girls. He even does his own OCs and draws them, his original characters. He features art from YouTubers that he so happens to be inspired by. He does artwork of Strawberry Shortcake. And of course, My Little Pony, because who in the hell does not love My Little Pony? I'm, I'm telling you, My Little Pony in its current Friendship is Magic series, which is going to end after this season, unfortunately, meaning this coming one, if it hasn't started yet, and by the time I've uploaded this video, perhaps it may have. But essentially, he does fan art of all these different shows that he is so happening to be inspired by. I do fan art as well, ironically, so it speaks to me on a personal level. In the meantime, I would like you to check out the next artist up for featuring on this show, Only the Ghosts. Only the Ghosts is a Japanese artist who, by the way, by the way, I should mention, is one of the most philosophical she is, he, she, he is one of the most philosophical, or the most, he's one of the wisest people I've ever met. I'm trying to find the words for it. I can't seem to find the words. But his philosophy is very refined, very matured. Mine is a lot more skewed than his, but I get where he's coming from. Here's the thing. He posted something concerning one of the people who allegedly decided to argue with things that only the ghost said. Because basically people are offended all the time now. I, I mentioned that earlier. But a deviant artist decided to basically disrespect him. And he handled this in a way that I believe to be perfect. Here's the thing. He says in this particular post that he made, this friend of mine, who I'm not going to, this friend of his, who I'm not going to name, chose to display typical lack of respect for presenting evidence and how to present arguments in a debate. Why is it apparently impossible for that twit to stay on topic but instead he resorted to presenting strawmen and diversions anyway this deviant who apparently hates only the ghosts 
must have decided they can't refute the point that only the ghosts made about the lack of evidence for consciousness being based entirely in the brain. Since said deviant chose to change the damn subject instead of dealing with the evidence. And then, of course, he very, very justifiably, and he's absolutely right in his questioning. Because apparently this, this deviant, who apparently hates only the ghosts, does not understand what staying on topic means. It's not rational to be closed-minded, he says, to the point of flippantly dismissing everything when you pers when he personally, or the deviant in question, I don't know if it's a he or she, but... But of course, you already see the deviant artist's name in question, who only the ghosts is referring to, but this deviant has never investigated the subject and knows very little about it. It's rather like said deviant is hiding in a Newtonian paradigm because said deviant can't cope with the results of experiments from 1909 onwards, such as the YouTube video in question that he apparently links us to. You will find that in the description of his post when you look at it, I'm sure. That particular experiment has been duplicated in results worldwide for quite a few decades and shows absolutely, through absolute clarity, that the conscious mind affects reality, which is terrifying for people who want to believe in a fixed world. This reaction, only the ghost explains, is emotionally driven. Humans want to believe. Their world is stable and solid and fits the paradigm taught in school textbooks and by the media because most people, and I've said this quite a few times over the last few months, are scared to face the possibility that the world is not even close to what they were taught. And I believe this guy. This Japanese deviant artist has a lot of wisdom to him, he has a lot of wisdom and understanding, he's done his homework, and he also does artwork, particularly literature, digital art, screenshots, he takes photographs, in terms of things like that, he does pretty much damn near everything. So this guy, in my opinion, is legitimate and I believe you should check this guy out so that he can share his wisdom with you go check him out all right then my yeah man we got something good coming up I am Sim Carstairs now I posted a status update or actually no I posted a journal I posted a journal which in my opinion explains my situation in very 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 vivid detail and I'm gonna read a bit of it to you first the update and then the original now I know what you people are thinking why do I not do contests anymore? Well, here's the thing. I'm very happy to host my own contests on DeviantArt. I've been privileged enough and blessed to hold these contests and host them on that site for about five years by this point. But with every contest that I hope that I host, the results remain completely the same. Upwards of 10 people at most 20 enter but most of them are too busy with life and they have too many priorities to meet in too little time so they are virtually stressed to find enough time and therefore they can't find enough time to come up with these entries because life is too hard and it's keeping them busy which I find absolutely understandable that is a legit reason 
So the most recent one that I did, my second Maestro Art Contest, there were 11 people that participated as either a judge, a contestant, or a prize giver. And of those contestants that entered, which I recall being 7 or 8 of the 11 that participated by my count, life was essentially keeping them busy with priorities that couldn't be held off. And so some of them had to drop out, and again, perfectly reasonable and perfectly understandable and justifiable given their respective situations. So at that moment, by the time it was all over, only three submissions were completed, a fourth of which a very good friend of mine from Italy, her name is Shana, of course, she goes by the DeviantArt username Shana-1. And she's been trying to finish in light of her life online and her recently having a minor fever at that point and all this stuff that is apparently going on that's keeping her busy. All the requests that she's having to make, all these requests that she's doing for people. And it very much gave me some time to think about how to explain to those that have ever entered my contests or those that wish to enter them moving forward why I had come to the decision that I had made regarding the contests. So it came to me that it would be best that I not hold these contests anymore until I find a way to motivate, to motivate myself to do these again, whichever one comes first. And that's, and you know what, I take the blame for it. I had one job as a contest holder and host, which was to keep the contestants and all those who participated informed on whatever contest I was running currently in that moment in time, and keep them up to speed on it, as well as ask them about an update on their current status pertaining to said contests. And I failed at that. And I failed at just about everything else that I've done in life. And even though I've given up on life practically, life isn't given up on me yet. So that's the only reason why I'm staying in this planet. That's the only reason why I haven't gone to pot. It's because life is done with me. Not yet, I should say. Life is not done with me yet. And so, I choose, of course, to keep going. Because it's absolutely needed. I need to keep going. I have to see this to my very end. I will never know until I keep going and I find that proverbial pot at the end of the golden rainbow. Right? And Sim, being this very wise man who's about a generation or two older than I am, this particular critique that he made, he very much commends me on my writing and ability to coherently put down my thoughts and feelings because not any more, not many anymore can do that. And so he invited me to take a walk through his musings so that I might find a kindred soul there, at least one who was very familiar with my trek through life to some degree, which I did. The subject of God, he continues, is divisional because I either believe or I don't. It's that simple as the end of the day because God can't and won't be bargained with. He has chosen those he loves and cares about because there's nothing we can do. I'm either elected as one of God's messengers or I'm not. Sim himself says that he's leaning towards elect here where I myself am concerned. And basically, he has artwork as well. He does pictures of dead animals. Well, actually, photographs, I should say. He has photographs of dead animals, of the weather, of nature, of certain images that he saw through his own two eyes that he photographed and his photography is very 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 spot on 
and this is the same Sim Carstairs who, through his one critique, was able to understand completely my situation and how he was able to relate to it in some extent. So him and I have been good friends since, and he, he also revealed to me that he's, he's in his late 50s and he's got diabetes. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with what I've said about this before, but essentially, this guy is a very understanding guy who can back up everything that he says and everything that he does with legit logic, which unfortunately, very, very, very few people are actually capable or choose to be capable of managing anymore. So go check this guy out. He's got over 2,353 deviations. He's got, damn, I can't even speak straight. He's got over 2,350 deviations while amassing only 6,500 views. So if you could just reach out to this guy for a moment, that would be absolutely awesome. Because if you're reaching out to him, you're giving yourself a huge thumbs up and you're giving yourself a bunch of kudos in the process. So kudos to you, Sim. Kudos to you. You are legitimately one of the wisest people I've ever met online. Next up, there is a Facebook page, Positive Zone, which reminds you to walk away from arguments that lead you to anger, from people who deliberately put you down, from pleasing people who never see your worth, from judgmental people who don't know your struggle or what you've been through, from your mistakes and fears, because they don't determine your fate, obviously, and from negativity, unless, of course, the situation calls for and it's perfectly justified. And the more that you walk away from these things that poison your soul, the healthier that you will be. And I noticed very similarly, I noticed very clearly the grammatical error right there. Healthy ear. The I and the E need to be changed around. The second E to be specifically. But that's alright, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone is allowed to make at least one mistake in life. And it's also very important to know, it's very important to know, from positive zone to you personally, that morning is God's way of saying one more time, go make a difference, touch a heart, encourage a mind, inspire a soul, and enjoy the day. Because if you don't make a difference by doing those things, then you're not making yourself a difference either. Right? I mean, it is really, really, really that simple. I can't express it enough. People, I can't, I can't explain this to you any simpler than that. So looking through all this particular art that I have seen. From all the stuff that I've seen over the last eight and a half years just about, or eight and a quarter more than likely, because that's what's most likely how long it's been. Through all the, through all the art that I have seen, right? And by the way, by the way, I'm not very good with words sometimes, so just bear with me. With all the work that I have seen, these are just a few of the artists that I have featured for you today, and I will link them in the description. I will be more than glad to do that. In the meantime, I have got to get my ass out of here and do something. I've got to do some shit.
And in the meantime, I thank you very much for watching and have a very blessed rest of your day. Thank you for your time. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like what you see, don't watch my channel. If you don't like it, don't watch. If you like it, do watch. It's that simple. 50-50.